Today we will be solving this problem called rectangle cutting. So we are given an A by B rectangle and our task is to cut it into squares. On each move you can select a rectangle and cut it into two rectangles in such a way that all side lengths remain integers. What is the minimum possible number of moves? The only input has two integers a and b, and a and b can be up to 500. So notice here 500, which indicates that the complexity will be of order n cube, maybe. And for this example, if a and b are 3 and 5, then the answer is 3. So let's go to the drawing board and see why that's the case. So in our example, we had a rectangle of length 3 by 5 and the answer was 3. So how could we divide this rectangle into squares in 3 moves? So we could go ahead and split it here. So we ha would have a 3 by 3 square and we will be left with a 3 by 2 rectangle. Then we can use another move to split it right here. And now we will have a 3 by 3 square a 2 by 2 square and a 1 by 2 rectangle that we will split again here and this will do it. So in the end we will have a 3 by 3 square, a 2 by 2 square and two 1 by 1 squares and it took us 3 moves to get there. So let's actually go ahead and work out a simple example and see what are all the possible moves that we can take. So let's go ahead and start with a 3 by 2 rectangle and see all the possible moves we can perform. And the moves we can perform will be of two kinds. The first kind will, will deal with this dimension whereas the second kind will deal with the second dimension. So for this 3 we can split it in two ways. Either it's gonna be 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1. Even though they seem identical, let's go ahead and not, not make any assumptions about this and just uh, write down all the possible cuts. So if we cut these three into one and two, then we will get the following. We'll get a one by two rectangle because this dimension will be split up to one plus two and it's still gonna have a length of two. So we're gonna have one and two and two and two. And in the second case, we will split this 3 into 2 and 1. So we'll have a 2 by 2 rectangle and a 1 by 2 rectangle. And finally, uh, we could also split this second dimension. And if we split this two, we only have one possibility. And that is of having 2 to be equal to 1 plus 1. And if we do that, we will have only this uh, option, which is 3 by 1 times 3 by 1. So these are all the possible configurations we can reach after the first move. And let's go ahead and continue. Now here we have a 1 by 2 rectangle and a 2 by 2 rectangle. It is pointless to split this rectangle any further but and wasting moves on it since it already beca became a square. So we'll just focus on this rectangle. And since this dimension is already equal to 1, we cannot split it any further without having sides uh, that are not integers. And thus we can only split this dimension and our only option is to break this 2 into 1 plus 1. And that's how we get this, which is a square of length 1, a square of length 1, and a square of length 2. Also, uh, from this case, we do not need to split this any further since it is a, already a square so we'll just focus on this rectangle and as we said this dimension is already at one so let's not split it any further so we'll just split this and the only way we could split this is by breaking it into one plus one and this will give us the this actual configuration and lastly for these two rectangles we can split them uh, symmetrically so for this first one we cannot split this dimension we are only left with this dimension and for this dimension we can either break it down to 2 plus 1 or 1 plus 2 
If we break it down to 1 plus 2, we will have 1 by 1 times 2 by 1 times 3 by 1. And if we break it down to 2 plus 1, we will get 2 by 1 times 1 by 1 times 3 by 1. And the same will apply to this rectangle. So the first rectangle will uh, remain as it is. And we will have a 1 by 1 times a 2 by 1 rectangle or a 2 by 1 times a 1 by 1 rectangle. So what are the things that we can notice here? So the first thing we notice is that once we get uh, a square, like in this case, it is just pointless to carry it afterwards because we just copy it down, we don't do anything with it, like here. So basically, uh, a square is our base case and we require zero moves to make a square. And the second thing to notice is that all these rectangles that we built after this one are all having coordinates that are less than or equal these two coordinates. And it makes sense because since we are making cuts, we are only going to smaller coordinates. And this is our clear indication that we will be using dynamic programming. And that it means if we knew the minimum number of moves required to make all uh, rectangles up to say A and B, then we could just guess the answer for A plus 1, B plus 1 by just checking all possible splits here and taking the minimum. So what I mean by this is that dynamic programming will allow us to stop only at this layer. So if I knew the minimum number of moves for all rectangles uh, which have dimensions smaller than 3, 2, like any of their dimension is smaller than 3, 2, like 3, 1 and so on, if I knew the minimum number of moves required for all these, then I can just uh, deduce the minimum number of moves for this by just taking the minimum of these numbers. Like in this case, I know that the minimum number of moves for a a rectangle of size 1, 2 is 1 because I require one move to split it into 1 and 1 by 1 and 1. So this is 1 and this is 0 because it's already a square. So I know that going down this path, I will require one move here. And in order to solve this, I would also require one move here for a total of two moves. And the same goes here. I know that I require one move here to go further. And I know that I require one move here to get to this state. So here also I will require two moves to solve 3, 2. And the same goes here. And here I know that I will require two moves to solve 3 by 1 because I require one move to get to 1 by 1 times 2 by 1. And then I will require another move to get from 2 by 1 to 1 by 1 times 1 by 1 for a total of 2 moves and I also know that I require 2 moves for this rectangle for a grand total of 4 moves and notice here that I will just add the requirements for both uh, squares because uh, these are associative so if I solve this problem and I solve this one they are independent and I can just add the number of moves required for each one and I also need one additional move to get from this state to this state for a grand total of five moves down this branch, two moves down this branch, and two moves down this branch. So the minimum in this case is two. So that's pretty much it. We can use a bottom-up dynamic programming approach. We know the minimum number of moves required for certain values, like namely we know that dp of i i where this represent the width and this represent the length is always equal to zero. Since this is a square, we don't need to split it any further. And we will just initialize all other values with infinity. And then for each value of dp of say ij, we only have two options. Either we're gonna split along this dimension or we're gonna split along this dimension and if we split along this dimension we're gonna have we're gonna reach a dp state that we already calculated because we proceed from the bottom up so we will just 
take the sum of those two dps plus one because for the extra move we want to reach this position here or we can go ahead and split al along the other dimension and what about complexity so our dp is two dimensional and the size of each dimension is n so we will have n square states so and we will visit all of them so we will have all of n square and moreover there are n transitions from each state so if i have i here say for example i have five i need to visit one and four two and three three and two and four and one and here i will have a precisely n minus one state so i require an additional n here to visit all possible states from any given state for a total complexity of n cubed so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and check out our code so this is our program i'll start by defining the maximum size of our dp which is uh, 500 so i just set it to 505 then i defined my dp and i call it the minimum number of cuts so let's just call it min cut and it's gonna be two dimensional of size nax by nax and i will suffice myself to ints since i don't fear any overflow issues then i will go ahead and read my two dimensions i will call them width and height then i will go ahead and initialize my dp array with infinity that i defined to be a billion so i will look through all widths from one up to my width included and through all heights from one up to my height included and i will just initialize those values with infinity then i will go ahead and set the positions that i know namely the squares so for each square uh, with side length i i will set the minimum number of moves to zero next i will have two four nested loops and for in each case i will see if i can minimize the number of moves required to make a rectangle of size w by h so i have two options either i'm gonna cut along the width dimension or along the height dimension so if my cut is along the width dimension it can either be of length from one up to w not included because if i include w then the other rectangle will have the width zero and that's not permissible so in each case i will minimize the minimum number of cuts required for the rectangle of size w by h with the minimum number of cuts required for a rectangle of size cut by h plus a rectangle of size w minus cut times h plus one because i just performed the move and then i can also minimize my answer along the other dimension namely the height dimension and here again i will go from height equal to one up to h not included and now i will minimize my answer with the minimum number of cuts required for a rectangle of size w by cut plus the minimum cuts required for a rectangle of size w times h minus cut plus one because i just performed a cut and my answer will be stored at position height or at position width times height so i'll just print that at the end so let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye